they are all dependent on each other yeah so if something is dependent on something else it cannot be a creator say that god depend on god or we say god depend on someone outside his nature no god depends on god the father different depends on the on the son and the son depends on the holy spirit the holy spirit depends depends on the son and the son depends on the father they are within themselves they depend on each other they don't depend on anyone exterior themselves Once again, beloved, I greet you and I welcome you to Lost in Media. Um, you know for sure that whenever I gave my seat, it's about we dismantling those several assertions that have been made against Christianity since time immemorial. That thing which has been orchestrating uh, since time immemorial in your mind is that um, Islam needs to be left ajar. Uh, we need not to tackle their issues and all that like. We need not to ever make the attempt to evangelize them or try our possible best to proselytize any muslim uh, seriously they are proselytizing christians and they are evangelizing christians hope you get to with me i think i think back back in the days it was said in ghana to be the or uh, it was said that ghana was the resistant belt of islam but you know what uh, ghana is becoming the very much essential place for islam and Tamale alone is a very much essential place for uh, Islamic apologists and all that. There are dozens of Islamic apologists in Tamale. I hope we get to me. Shout out to you, all of you in Tamale. Tamale East, Church of Christ, West, South, and North, Church of Christ, Preacher uh, Dasa. Shout out to you. Beloved, we're going to react on, a, uh, on an assertion that, um, that was made by uh, this Islamic scholar with the name Ali Dawa, okay? Ali Dawa. Uh, Christian Prince, uh, Christian Prince um, actually pinpointed a contradiction or contradictory statement that he made. Okay, he made a statement here on a platform, and on another given platform, he made a statement that contradicts the actual statement he made uh, previously. Oh, we get to with me, and it's something uh, that is somewhat funny, and it tells you of. Uh, the double mouth of most Muslims. I'll be get to me because sometimes I think when Muslims think they've gotten into the hot or uh, the heat, seriously, they try their possible best to create something uh, that will help to liberate Islam from uh, being attacked by infidels or what. But okay, they call those that, do, that doesn't believe or doesn't have the Islamic faith infidel that's why i put that i put it that way okay they try their possible best to clear it off so as to be able to make it look nice in the sight of the unbelievers or the non-muslims beloved shall we take a quick break and we return to react on the assertion this uh islamic uh, apologist said ali dawa <laughs> On this platform, Ali Dawa was asked to debunk the idea of Trinity in one minute, okay? He was told to debunk the idea of Trinity in one minute. You see, Ali Dawa is, a, is, a most, is, a, is an Islamic apologist, okay? And uh, just like how people uh, do hear from Muslims always and every time when they are on their dawah or when they are preaching in regards to Islam and telling people Islam is the way and all that and Islam uh, talks of a monotheism or Islam is all about monotheism or Muslims do have monotheistic belief and all that and for that matter they reference Jesus Christians as being tritheistic because perhaps they believe that we do worship three gods. Or we, or we do worship three distinct gods. That's exactly what Muslims uh, has been taught. I'll be getting with me. But you know what? It, it isn't true that way. When you study the Bible, when you take the time, take time to study the Bible very well, you get to know that uh, the Bible depicts God as being triunited. 
three but one God. God is only one, but He is three uh, but one. Whenever you come across the term God in the Bible, I've already told you in previous videos that God is a God is a unit. Okay, God is a unit, and not just a simple unit, but rather an interdependent unit. How we get with me? Uh, the Father uh, do not go. Uh, what is it? The, the, the Father do not go without the, the Son, and the Son do not go without the Holy Spirit. They are all together. They are interdependent. They depend on each other to do anything. Okay? They depend on each other. And apart from themselves, they don't depend on anyone outside them. All we get to miss because the argument this man is going to make is that if a God is an interdependent unit, fancy the Father depends on the Son, the Son depends on the Father, the Father, de uh, the Son also depends on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit depends on both of them and all that. It really means He cannot be God. Okay, Jesus had to become man and He depended on God and all that. The Father it doesn't make Him God and all that. You see, the three but one God depends on themselves. You get that? So for the Father to depend on the on the Son, and the Son to depend on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to depend on the Father, and the, and depend on the Son and all that, it really means they do not depend on anyone outside themselves. If they were dependent on anyone outside themselves, that is exactly what would create aspersion on God of the Bible. Let me get to it. But the Bible says they are interdependent. Okay? They are interdependent. They are co-equal, co-eternal. Okay, it is in that sense. They are interdependent because in a way that they are co-equal, co co-existent, and co-eternal. They do not go without each other. They do everything in common. That is it. Okay? The Father has been Father eternally, the Son has been Son eternally, and the Holy Spirit has been Holy Spirit eternally. And this is a clear stipulation in the Bible. When you say the Old Testament, you come across the idea that God, even the term God, Elohim, Elohim. I've already told you that the actual Hebrew term for God, or the Hebrew term, uh, what is Eloah, Eloah, is what? Is, is one. Okay? The Hebrew term Eloah is one. Okay? But the Hebrew term Elohim, Elohim, means God. Okay? God and there is an S. Okay, so the, the Hebrews knew for sure that indeed God, God, God is a unit and God isn't a literal one. God is one, but not literal. Okay, I think when you read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 4, or the 4, verse number 6, the Bible says, uh, Moses told the Israelites, Yahuwah Israel, Shama Ikad Yahuwah Elohim. You get that? Yahuwah Israel, the Lord Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You get that? The Lord our God, the Lord is one. So, one in what sense? That is exactly how you study the Bible and you understand. Okay? Study the Bible with a critical eye and an open mind. All we get to me, all oh, that is it. You have to understand the terms used over here. Yahuwah, Israel, Shama, Ikad. What is the, what is the meaning of Ikad? Okay? Ikad is not a literal one, but rather a figurative one. One in the figurative sense. Okay? Fancy, all of you shall be one. You all shall be one. The three of you shall be one. Literally, it doesn't make sense for three people to be one. Okay? Literally, it doesn't make sense for four people to be one. But rather, figuratively, uh, be one. Four people should be one. That is figuratively, and it does make sense. Oh, we get to me. So, God is one in that sense. God isn't one in the literal sense or in the literal manner. He isn't one in the numerical sense. Now we get to remain. That is it. So um, when you go to also Shama Ik, Shama, Yahweh Israel, Shama Ikad, Yahweh Elohim. Elohim means God. God's God and S is included. Now we get to remain. If you <laughs> that is it. So it really tells you that the Hebrews themselves knew for sure God isn't one in the numerical sense. So when you read the Bible, when you go to Genesis one verse number one, and the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. What is the Bible stipulating over here? So you'll be like, in the beginning, the Bible says, only one God created. But why do you say Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and it's about you sitting up on your buttock and studying. All we get to the actual word used over there is Elohim. The Elohim is in the uh, figurative sense, okay? Uh, it is, what is it? It is telling you of the united God. All we get to me, it is telling you of the united God. Read uh, Genesis 11, verse number 7. Genesis 2, 
uh, verse number uh, yeah, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 20, thereabout. Read also Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verse number 9. That was you get to know the idea, like what actually I am expressing over here. How we get to in the old testament, it was ambiguous, it was something equivocal. But in the New Testament, it's it's made plain, it's made explicit and implicit. Okay, when you go to Matthew 28, verse number uh, verse number uh, 19, you get to know that Jesus Christ stipulated that if anyone would be baptized, that person would be should be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You get that. And when during the time Jesus Christ was being baptized, you read the Bible and you come across it in Mark chapter 1, verse number uh, 6. There, six that was, you get to know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ was uh, what, what was was there with John and the Holy Spirit descended, fancy a dove, and also the Father spoke from above. You get that. So that it, it gives you a picture of the actual uh the, the actual nature of God. How we get to him in his three, but one God. If Ephesians chapter four, verse number four down was tells you also of three people who are one uh one, one in essence. How we get to remain. So that is God. God is in, God is interdependent, but they do not depend on anyone outside them. They depend on themselves. That is how God does his things. Okay. So according to him, let's hear him out. He's saying it is very simple to debunk the idea that uh, the idea of Trinity. Christians are tritheistic, and we try to be inter. What is it? We 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 trying to associate the other gods to God, blah 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 blah, and all that. Let's hear him out and return. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Can you debunk the Trinity in one minute? Well, it's very simple. They believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are all gods, but they are not the same as each other. So the point here is that if you think about it. They are all dependent on each other, yeah? So if something is dependent on something else, it cannot be a creator. If Jesus walked the earth as a human being, ate, slept and went to the toilet, we do not believe this is deserving to be a God to be worshipped, you know? So that's the reason why the Holy Spirit, for example, is the same thing. It is in the creation. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God because they are dependent. And anything that's dependent cannot be deserving of worship. What is that, some, what, what is that something? And what is the thing that that thing is being depended upon? Okay, what is that thing depending upon? Right, that is that should be the question. Okay, the Bible isn't saying that God is an interdependent unit. Okay, it isn't simple. God isn't simple unit, but interdependent unit. If God is an interdependent unit, and do we say that God depend on God, or we say God depend on someone outside His nature? No. God depends on God, okay? The Father depends on the, on the Son, and the Son depends on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit def depends, depends on the Son, and the Son depends on the Father. How we get to it? I mean, they are within themselves. They depend on each other. They don't depend on anyone exterior themselves. How we get to it? So this argument do not stand. Okay, fancy someone that depends on somebody uh, that cannot be a creator. Okay, the thing is, they consulted themselves before creating, but they consulted none outside themselves. They depend on themselves, and this makes sense because that is the nature of God, that is the essence of God. All we get to me. So the argument, uh, what is it, Mr. Ali Dawa is uh is is a, is a certain over here, isn't isn't really good argument. All we get to me. You should ask of who do God depend upon? Who do the Father depend upon? Who do the Son depend upon? And you said it right, that they do depend on each other. So if the Father depends on the Son, and the Son depends on the Holy Spirit, and they do not depend on anyone outside themselves, what, what is the stipulation that they, he cannot be God? He says cannot be God, the Father cannot be God, blah, 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 blah. How we get to him? It is not true that way. So Mr. Ali Dawa got it wrong over here, and he, asked, he again, okay, I think that place alone, and let's return. They are all dependent on each other, yeah? So if something is dependent on something else, it cannot be a creator. He continues by saying, uh, if Jesus walked the earth as a human being, he ate, slept, and went to the toilet. L look at all this. Look at all this. You see, these are some of the, excuse me to say, excuse me to say, <laughs> I don't want to put it. Okay? It's a loose talk. It's a loose talk. Okay, we do not expect an Islamic sheikh like you. 
Islamic scholar like you to be reasoning this way. Okay, what haven't we what, what, what haven't you what, what haven't we told you about the accommodation theory? Okay, what have we what haven't we told you about the anthropomorphic nature of Jesus Christ or God? What is anthropomorphism? And what is accommodation? We've been telling you on of, of how God accommodated finitude. Okay, how God appeared to man in the person of Jesus Christ. And the reason behind why Jesus Christ or God had to become man. Oh, we get to, we, we've been studying all this while, and I think by this time you should, you should have put a stop to this kind of uh, weak arguments. Fancy Jesus Christ. So uh, that is exactly what Sean Paul and Co. are making. You get that? Jesus went to toilet. Jesus Christ was a baby, and uh, what, he was circumcised, and all that. Mr. Ahmed Chase argument when we when we were engaged in a debate at Kenya Assembly. Sorry, this is a weak argument. Okay, we do not expect this kind of argument from Islamic scholars like you. Like study the if study though you will be debating us, but study the Bible also. Okay, there are principles in regard to studying the Bible and everything in regard to uh, uh, the study Christology, and you would understand this. Study the theandric or theanthropic nature of Jesus Christ, and you would understand this. We don't have to, we do, you need not to be told all this by this time. Or we get, it's a weak argument. Okay, there are certain assertions you don't have to make in your argument. Okay, all because you want to tarnish the image of Jesus Christ, you want to tarnish every idea about Jesus Christ that he is a deity. But the Bible, okay, even, even, even to prove to me that Jesus Christ even went physically to the toilet, where do you prove it in the Bible? You don't have any proof in the Bible. Okay, you don't have any proof. You can give me evidences. Fancy human beings do go to toilet. Okay, they do excrete and all that. But what about Jesus Christ? You telling me this is the proof that Jesus Christ indeed went to toilet? You cannot tell me since Jesus Christ was a human being, perhaps he went to toilet. So what? So what? We tell you always and every time that Jesus Christ became fully man and he was fully God as well. All we get to me, like when you go to uh, Matthew chapter one verse number twenty three. John chapter 1 verse number 1, John chapter 1 verse number 17, uh, John chapter 1 verse number 14, and also when you go to Colossians 2 verse number 9, Colossians 1 verse number 15 and 16, when you go to uh, also 1 Peter 2 verse number 20 through 22, okay, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse number uh, 17 thereabout, you get to know, and Hebrews 2 verse number 14, you get to know that indeed Jesus Christ became man. He accommodated finitude, okay, but he what he didn't accommodate human error okay is it sinful to go to toilet it is it isn't so this is a weak argument okay jesus christ became a man and he was circumcised is it sinful for him to be circumcised it isn't okay he didn't commit any sin and your own quran affirms this in surah to mariam ayah 19. all we get to him jesus christ ate and he took in water Jesus Christ, he cried, uh, blah, 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 blah. Is, the, to, is crying a sin? He cried. Every human being do cry. But if you see someone cry, you cannot say you, you, you've sinned because you are crying. Eh? You've, you've sinned because you, you go to toilet. Okay? You cannot be God because you go to toilet. What, is, what are all these? What are all these? So, and he made a blunder. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what is, uh, he made... Um, a blatant error over here, and it's going to shock you. Christian Prince is actually going to pinpoint this uh, to our hearing, and uh, he made this assertion. He says that, um, so that's the reason why the Holy Spirit, for example, is the uh, same thing. It isn't, it is in the creation. You get that? So, point of correction. Let's watch him on this assertion and we correct him a bit. Mr. Ali Dawa, we correcting you, okay? Because this assertion you're making, a, you're making in regards to the Holy Spirit, seriously, you don't know who the Holy Spirit is. Shall we hear him out and return? If Jesus walked the earth as a human being, ate, slept and went to the toilet, we do not believe this is deserving to be a God to be worshipped. You know? So that's the reason why the Holy Spirit, for example, is the same thing. It is in the creation. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. Well, he says he puts it. Okay? It is sometimes put for inanimate objects. Okay? Or stars fancy animals. The dog, 
the what is it the tree the table the, the chair and all that all these are referred to as it okay that is it so what if a person puts it for the holy spirit what would the person mean they really means that the holy spirit uh, cannot be a person you get that the jehovah witness will tell you the holy spirit is a radar beam some force some force of God, you get that, like, they don't see the Holy Spirit to be a person or personality. But is this really true? This tells us of how people weakly study the Bible. Okay? How people weakly study the Bible. Even just in um, Acts chapter 5, you get to know that the Holy Spirit is a person, even He is God. Okay? The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit is God. How we get to me? What about John chapter 14, verse number 26, John 15, 26, John 16, verse number 7, thereabout? The Holy, the Holy Spirit is referred to with the male gender pronoun he. Okay? He's being referenced as he in the Bible. The male gender pronoun is ascribed to him. He is a person. He is somebody. He is a deity. He is God. So you cannot put it for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't some mere spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit is God. That is the reason the Holy Spirit cannot be God. So you put you you put it across that the Holy Spirit is Muhammad. The Jesus, the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ said he was going and he was going to come to comfort the apostles. It's Muhammad. That is exactly what you say. So putting it for the Holy Spirit over here, it means you are referring to Muhammad as an as an it or somewhat like an animal. Or something that is not important. Or we get to be me. That is exactly what you 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 you, you are you are putting a cross over here. That is it. So uh, point of correction: the Holy Spirit isn't an it. You cannot put it for the Holy Spirit. Okay, you cannot put it for the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a deity. He is God. Okay, so his argument is that the Holy Spirit, for example, is the same thing. It is in the creation. So therefore, if the Holy Spirit is in the creation, can live within the creation and all that, it really means the Holy Spirit is in God. Look at this argument. Look at this argument. Can you enter into your creation? Can a person live in their creations? Yes. We do live in our creations. Look at where I am right now. I'm a lost in media, right? That is it. Lost in media is a creation. It has been created by somebody. So am I working within the creation? Yes, I'm working within the creation. Okay? There are several many sites or websites across the globe or around the globe. Okay? There are several many channels on the tube. And do people work on these very channels? Yes. They do emerge on the screen of these, these kind of channels. Are they not operating within their, within their creations? You build mansions, you build houses and all that. And you do live within these mansions. Okay? You create cars. You invent cars and all that. All these are human creations. Do you live in them or you don't? You do. Hope you get to me. So it, it, it's a weak argument for it, it, it's a weak argument, Mr. Ali Dawa is making over here. That the Holy Spirit entered creation, therefore the Holy Spirit cannot be God. This is a weak argument. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, and again, he says, anything that is in the creation cannot be God because they are dependent. This is, this is unthinkable argument, unreasonable argument. Okay, it is, it is, not, an, it is not a good argument to make. He, Mr. Ali Dawa didn't think really well of this. He wouldn't have made this argument. Oh, we get to what mean. So the father is dependent upon the son and the son is dependent upon the holy spirit therefore they cannot they, 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 the holy spirit cannot be god the son cannot be god what about the father can the father be god okay can the father be god because the father is also dependent upon the son and all that but what you have to grasp over here is that they do depend on themselves that is the nature of god god is triune try united okay they do depend on themselves they do not depend on anyone outside them they depend on themselves. So if the father depends on the son, he's dependent on God. If the son depended, depends on uh, what is it, the father, he's dependent on God, on God. 
if the uh, Father depends on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit depends on the Father, they are dependent on themselves to do whatever they want to do. So if God depends on God, they can create. Are we getting with me? They do not depend on anyone outside them. If in case they were operating outside or they were depending on anyone outside them, that would mean for sure that indeed they are not God. Or he isn't God. Are we getting with me? So you need to mark well your arguments, your line of arguing and all that. Are we getting with me? So I think he says something. He said um, anything that is dependent upon something cannot be God. The Holy Spirit is dependent. The Son is dependent. Therefore, Jesus Christ cannot be God because he even entered creation and all that. Fine. Christian Prince is going to rehype us with a response. Okay. He's going to give us clear-cut contradiction. Okay. Mr. Ali Dawa made this statement on that platform you saw. And surely he's going to make another statement that will, uh, that will break him down. Shall we hear Christian Prince out and return? Amazing. Anything is in the creation cannot be God. Well, a Christian Prince is uh, feeling amazed. He says, amazing. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. Well, let's watch the contradictory part of uh, Mr. Ali's argument and return. Your hadith says, Ali, um, Ali, Allah descends to the lowest heaven yes. on the last part of the night. Yes. Can you explain to us what that means? Yes, sure. So, I asked him a question, he replied with another question. No, I'm going to respond. Okay, but, okay, I'll yeah. answer, I'll answer. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation. Is, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation. He said the sentence into his creation. He said the seventh, uh, the lowest part of the heaven, the way befits his majesty. How that happens? How, how it happens? I have no idea how it happens. You have no idea anything. <laughs> you see, it's a clear cut contradiction. You don't know what he's saying. You see, you don't know what he's saying. The Christian put a question across. He says, Your hadith says Allah descends to the lowest heaven on the last part of the, uh, of, of, of the night. Can you explain to us what that means? And Mr. Ali began explaining by saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation. <laughs> Listen to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta enters into his creation. Look at this. He said somewhere that Allah or anything that enters into creation cannot be creator, cannot be God. Therefore, what's his conclusion? Based on these premises, based on these data, based on these informations we've laid down, we thereby conclude that Allah is in God, according to Mr. Ali Dawa. Oh, we got to with me. According to Mr. Ali Dawa, Sheikh Ali Dawa, Allah cannot be God because Allah has entered into his creation. Meanwhile, he has settled somewhere that if indeed uh, someone enters into creation and is dependent, Seriously, that person, that one, cannot be God. Allah has been able to enter into his creation. Therefore, according to Mr. Ali, Dawa, Allah is never God. Thank you. The logical law of contradiction states that uh, a thing cannot be true and not be true at the same time in the same sense. You get that? A contradictory statement cannot be true and not be true at the same time in the same sense. That is the metaphysical principle of contradiction and also the logical law of contradiction. Therefore, he is contradicted himself. Please, don't be contradicting yourself. Next time, make sure to gather well your information before you argue or before you stipulate or you, before you assert anything or you throw anything into the air. Now, uh, may God richly bless you. Shall we uh, go and next time we return? Greetings to everyone. Bye-bye.